Hello, this is Oliver and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about trading Kaizen. So here's what we're going to cover. What is trading Kaizen? Then we're going to talk about the power of self-reflection. And then the next trade. So this is all to do with mindset and what to do when taking action in trading apart from all the theory and learning so what is trading kaizen kaizen is a japanese term that translates to continuous learning or continuous improvement and trading kaizen is the idea of never staying stagnant always finding and learning new ways to improve trading so this is just finding ways to make things more simple more efficient and more better and just constantly doing that over and over and over again so what are the components behind this trading kaizen can be broken down into three components which is theory so start with learning theory and general concepts like what an order block is or what a fair value gap is or what a liquidity pool is and then two take an action on that theory but like properly so how can you take the best action when incorporating that theory rather than just forcing it with inexperience so that's proper proper action uh, example of this would be like an a plus setup versus a c minus setup the a plus setup would be proper action and then step three is reflection so you just reflection on the actions you took and then you're trying to find some some insights in that and you're just trying to repeat this process over and over again. So theory is where you start and then you take action. And then when you take action, you reflect for insights and then you repeat the insights and then you build reference experiences for theory now. And then you understand it on a deeper level so that you can take better action. You just repeat it over and over and over again. And this is what we call trading kaizen so don't get trapped in only studying theory the only way to improve is via action so the theory is potential knowledge the actions become reference experiences that solidify that knowledge so the theory stays the same but due to your unique trade of self you need to discover how you and you adapt and mold to a trading system via action only so you need to discover this on yourself if it's going to stay the same however your unique self maybe you're more of a long-term thinker maybe maybe you like to make decisions on a on a short-term basis that's how you're going to adapt and that's how you're going to mold um to your system so understand the differences between quality action versus quantity action. So to do this, you need to understand the balance between theory and action. And then that can determine what makes quality action and what makes quantity action. So first of all, Due to trading being a game of probabilities, the wrong action in trading can lead to being humbled by the market, which means like taking a stop loss and taking a hit. And why? Well, sometimes it's a cost of business, but the majority of the time, the, the person, the trader that got humbled, fair to balance between, find the balance between theory and action. So, what is this is is they they focus fixate on 
one or another too much. They can either focus too much on theory and never take action, and get getting stuck in theory, or they can just take too much action and not have any quality behind it. So therefore, too much action is counterproductive in trading, and also too much theory is also counterproductive in trading because you're not building any reference experiences. And there's no clarity in the value of your action, okay? Therefore, you overtrade or punt trades because you don't have enough theory behind your action, so you don't know the value behind it, or vice versa. Where you're too much theory, you're scared, therefore you don't enter any trades, and you miss out on trades, and then when you do, uh, miss out on trades, sometimes you have a FOMO, and that's, it can make it even worse. So, we need to understand the, the balance between theory and action. So, professional traders understand the perfect ratio by balancing theory and action. And this allows them to focus on a plus trading setups, value action, like value action is things that actually progress you further in your career rather than distraction or procrastination. So we can call this value action, right? An A plus trading setup would be value action. Or well, two, they save time from trading the C, C minus trading setups. So these are setups with no value. So C minus, it's just the worst parts of your trading and the thing that is holding you back from progression. So when you contribute to this, it's not valuable, it's regressing you from your goal, or it's becoming um, some sort of method to stagnate your goal. So it, we just don't want to get involved in that. We don't want to get distracted in that or procrastinate within that. Save all that time and divert that extra time to focusing on reflection or iteration, which is to take bad action. But when we take action, it's always from one here, so it's always value action, which is A plus string stops. So that's how we balance theory and action. So theory creates quality. Focusing on theory allows for more quality action. Your trading system and plan identifies when a trade setup will follow a trading edge. It will filter out high probability versus low probability setups. So when you design your trading system and when you make your plan, these are always going to be textbook scenarios of your ideal setup. So it's not every day where that can happen. And you want to identify the criteria that makes that date. And just by that, having that filter, it will, it will filter out like the probability of the setup. Will it be high probability or will it be low probability? And the filtered result is a clear distinction between an A plus setup or C minus training setup. So an A plus training setup would be like, okay, we're in low resistance, so price can be explosive. Um, it's a good day of the week. Uh, we have some volatility. We just hit a high time frame level. Price can move from A to B very fast and aggressively. So this is all A plus training uh, setup stuff, like components of it. So, and then we want to identify with the filters when that's most likely going to happen. And we just want to focus on that. Okay. We want to remove all the focus from or any focus from C minus stuff so it doesn't hold us back. So this process of filtering high probability versus low probability, it removes all the potential for regression or stagnation also and focuses only on the potential of progression. So consistent 
to the training system and plan. All your decision making should stem and remain consistent to the training system and plan. Whatever is inconsistent to the training system and plan is a distraction and is procrastination. Why? It's not aligned to your defined projected goals and can lead to regression or stagnation. <clears throat> so in your training system and in your plan, everything's ideal and you have all your goals and projections and you reverse engineer everything to achieve a predefined result with the proper action and um, just the sequence of everything. So if you've identified every action that you've taken with complete clarity already, whenever you're inconsistent to that, that's a distraction, that's a procrastination, and that's just going to regress you from your projected goals. That's going to stagnate you from your projected goals because it's the action you're taking is not aligned, it's not consistent to the trading system or plan. So you won't achieve the defined projected goal. So therefore, so therefore start diverting your limited resources to only focus on actions that will provide you with A plus training setups. Like I said in the previous slide, this is value action, action that actually progresses you towards your goal and it's action that you've thought of beforehand and all you have to do is stay consistent to the plan. So why is it limited resources? Well your time is limited. Most likely you're not doing this full time yet or you're trying to balance it with you know family and other stuff maybe another business. That means your time is actually limited so you need to know how to direct that correctly and also your energy is limited you can't just trade all day in front of the charts and expect to have peak focus your risk is a limited resource mental capital is also a limited resource so that's why every action we want to take is aligned to the predefined projected goals and this is this leads to potential progression. A plus setups progress equity, C minus setups regress equity, and risk management ensures equity. Action fixates quantity. Okay, so this is the opposite of um, quality, this is where you're taking too much action. So focusing on action fixates more on quantity action. So just taking as much action as possible instead of balancing that with proper theory, waiting, and see even seeing if it's textbook and then considering it, considering the action. This focuses purely on action. So in this is a problem in trading. It's not like, you know, business in real life or having like a you know a store or something where action is good in trading too much action is bad why is it bad because of probabilities okay the issue here is probabilities trading is a game of probabilities so if we just fixate on action such as when am i going to get the trade signal or the be the more trade signals the better well, when you're trading like this, you're not considering the actual probabilities behind your trading setup. You're not considering your edge, what makes you know what makes you actually beat the market, and you're not considering your own limited resources, uh, which could actually affect every area of your trading. It's all in interconnected. So this is trading with no proper framework. Okay. So theory solves this issue. Okay, solves probabilities, but does so at the cost of limiting trade frequency. So instead of taking action, 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 we apply theory 
and theory says, oh, okay, you shouldn't trade on this day, wait for the next day. And that's limiting trade frequency, but by doing this, we can ensure that the probabilities of our trade actually have an edge. So this is the start of balancing theory and action. And professional traders understand the perfect balance between theory and action. So a perfect ratio emphasizes quality action. It all comes to preferences. So it depends on where you are at on your trading journey. Uh, but traders have different preferences preferences for how much action they want to take. Some traders want to take action all week, every day, grind, hustle, but also reflect and iterate on feedback, which is phenomenal, which is what you should always do. And if you do this, that's a fantastic way for building a bunch of reference experiences and for data collection. So if you're just trying to train your eyes, and operate with within certain narratives and doing that on a high frequency a time frame such as the one minute that's great for building reference experiences but uh when it comes time to become more of a professional where you want to do this reali realistically a sensible and sober approach is preferred for longevity and consistency so an example of this would be my humble approach it's to submit to the trading system for presenting an edge so if this says oh you can't trade um in london today because late new york you know that already moved a certain amount of pips so that means if i was to take action in london then there would be a low probability setup because it would be just getting stuck in chalk. So my trading system has filtered this out and I'm not going to trade it because it's not aligned with my edge. So I need, I need to submit to only when my trading system presents an edge and this is theory. And then I got to submit to the time required for that edge with patience. So I, I have to be more of a long term thinker. I can't just think about, oh, it's one day. And then it's a Tuesday and it's Wednesday. I got to think, okay, I have five days within the week and I only need a couple of trades to hit my weekly goal. So I'm going to think I'm going to use the five days instead of living day by day. So just becoming a more long term thinker than instead of a short term thinker. And also take only action on A plus setups which is quality action. I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to be procrastinating in the market with shitty setups or C minus setups, sorry. So just focusing on quality, that's going to bring me closer towards my goals and only being patient for that and just taking action only on that. And when I do get the feedback from that, I, I will reflect on it and I'll iterate on that data because that's quality data. That's when I was trying to trade at my peak performance. And now I can see the insight from that trade so I can reflect and iterate. And I'm going to take as much time as I want for that. So that the next trade, I can make it even better than the previous one. So maybe in the way I managed to trade, the way I removed the risk, <laughs> the way I trail the stop, I just want to become a better trader each and every time. Uh, we have a new trade that presents a new opportunity just to iterate and experience trading Kaizen. So instead of trading like five days a week, you're only trading two or three days a week and not even a full day. Maybe it's in, in, in Tuesday, it's action, but only in, in London session. Or Wednesday would be action, but only in New York session because of the news. So the perfect ratio. So realistically, each trading week will produce two or three A plus setups per week. Um, this is when the like the daily range will have like a large range expansion, 
because the weekly range is creating its move and that setups aligned with that order flow can occur two to three times per week sometimes one but that's the most extreme on the low side and then three that's the max sometimes you could even go to four it depends but it's a rare i would say average averagely would be two to three and then monday to friday it exists 10 trading opportunities so this would be london new york okay london new york so throughout the week our trading system will filter out which are A plus setups, which ones are C plus setups, C minus setups. So you, you don't always want to just trade because it's a, a session. You don't want to trade because it's London session. You don't want to trade because it's New York session. You want to trade because your your system told you to do so. So if, you're t if your trading system said, okay, this setup is a C minus setup, then don't trade it, okay? Focus only when the system says, all right, it's an A-plus setup. And then that's going to limit the trade frequency to two or three A-plus setups a week. And you might think this is less, but less is actually more, which we'll cover in a bit. So the trading system is reverse engineered from your A-plus setup. So you must make sure that all the components in your actions are consistent to that as well. So focus on quality over quantity and less is more. So how do we speed up trading Kaizen? Well, have, have professionals hold you accountable. Accountability for taking quality action, maintaining consistency and discipline, or hang out with like minded individuals who will push you through times of turbulence or uncertainty help with reflection and iteration by solving problems and finding solutions and discuss pragmatic steps to ensure longevity of resources like your time energy risk like these should always be things you're thinking about trying to do better trying to achieve trading kaizen and sometimes that could be hard to do alone. It could take a longer time. Or you might have to go through some unnecessary waste of time or like resources to, to finally get there when it could have been easily avoidable. So having a trading coach will also help. So it has a lot of market wisdom and insights. And already walked the path you're trying to walk. And will push you to take action in the right direction to ensure quality action instead of procrastination okay or just dis distraction like focusing on the shiny object or trading on the day when you're not supposed to trade which is just low probability okay and a coach will also help you reflect on the right things to ensure trading progression instead of trading stagnation and regression so start taking action don't get stuck in theory and then reflect okay so this is how the cycle works of trading kaizen and if you want to speed things up you don't want to waste time uh stress or whatever try get a trading coach to hold you accountable and speed up this reflection part 10 times faster as we spin to generate this force of trading kaizen so it's 2024 and imagine if you got started three years ago just pr taking action properly just think about how faster you could have progressed. So, trading Kaizen builds trading wisdom. The power of self-reflection. Reference experiences. Don't let your last trading session go to waste. Don't let your last day or week 
go to waste. Like within these periods, contain data and insights that act as feedback for your trader self or system. So whenever you trade a day, and you you're putting your man hours in that, you're putting your time into that, and you're just chucking all that time away, and you're not looking within that for any data or insights, then you basically have nothing else to apart from a win or loss to help act as feedback for your trader self or system to improve. Or if you do, if you had a whole week or a month of that within that data. Could have been insights that could have transformed your trader self and overall just progressed as a trader. And failing to self reflect then becomes a wasted chance to build a reference experience. Like, can you imagine going through one of the greatest bull runs of all times in 2017 or, you know, going through like the pandemic's price action and not remembering anything, not dissecting that experience what if something like that happens again in the future will you know how to navigate it i don't know but that's why we want to build reference experiences where you can be like oh i've been here before and i can feel comfortable in this uncertainty rather than just you know be frantic about it so trade risk the risk of every trade serves as the tuition fee for market feedback so the market would always be your best mentor if you allow it. So whenever you take a risk on a trade, that one hour, it's more than just the opportunity to make money, but you're also paying a slight cost and the market's going to give you a feedback on that cost and then you could study that feedback to make better inputs in the future for your risk. So that the next trade could be a slightly enhanced version or you just, you know, you just get into the groove better or you, you get into the flow and the momentum of things where you just execute it better. This could be all done with just studying the feedback of that single trade and just trying to make it better and better and better. But some people don't see the value within this. They just see it as minus one or and they just try to forget about it like it doesn't exist. So think more deeply about the the risk in this direction for improvement rather than just coming from like a scarcity mindset so failing to self reflect equals to chucking market into the market's abyss for free so you know you could just take the stop out and then you can just get hurt and that's it or you self reflect on that trade and you have two options where that, that loss could tell you, tell you more about the market's narrative, which could lead to more wins, or it can tell you feedback, brutally honest feedback about yourself that you could use to progress as a trader. But this only can happen if you take the time to self-reflect, and if you don't do that, then that opportunity is gone. It's gone forever into the market's abyss, because you'll just forget about it. And the worst part is, you'll repeat this over and over again until you do self-reflect. So, you don't want to get stuck in the, in the loop. And that's the loop of no progress. And don't be the person who doesn't become a better trader on a quarterly or annual basis. That's just wasting time, distraction and procrastination, and it's just going to get worse. It's going to get uh, frustrating. And don't be the person who has spent hours and hours on theory, but doesn't have a consistent system yet to follow. So, with the time and effort placed into showing up to trading sessions, which could be hours, one, four, one hour to four hours, depend on how you want to do your business. You show up every week, like a, like a job, because it is like you're showing to you're showing up to the market. That's also a job. And then you watched all educational resources, so you spend hours in theory. If you're doing all of this right, you're putting all these hours in. Like, does that really feel like you're making trading progression? Like, it must feel like you're making trading progression because you're you're showing up, right? 
but the true trader self progression is found within self reflection and self reflection builds self awareness by taking the time after a trade to self reflect you can become aware of and remind of the positive or negative things that you did within that trading session and then this builds self awareness which allows you to maximize or minimize like future action so um let's say trade leverage you're selling that over risk or it becomes become aware of it first become aware of okay i'm a person that tends to over risk this is something that i should minimize or maybe you hold a trade for too long and then it loses its magic it doesn't look like it's gonna go according to plan anymore so you should maximize action when pro like monitor monitoring the trades progression okay maybe that's something you need to maximize instead of not doing anything but first you need to build self-awareness okay but forgetting to self-reflect guarantees not being self-aware of these insights so imagine if you self-reflected for a full trading quarter like 90 days uh, why 90 days where well, you should operate like a business yourself and a lot of these like let's say a fortune 500 company they also operate uh, with quarterly objectives and quarterly earnings and each quarter has its own season as well and its own narrative so I like operating within the quarter within 90 days and like imagine if you were self reflected for a full trading quarter 90 days from day 1 to day 90 and then you become aware of the things you did exceptionally well and then the next time let's say the narrative was a trending market right you did exceptionally well but the next time the market the, the market's narrative is in a trending model again you know how to take advantage of it better this time because you would want to reinforce what you did exceptionally well last time and try to enhance it make it make it a bit better and that's kaizen or you would be aware of the things you did poorly so let's say like in a trending model you were trying to catch the top or you were trying to catch the bottom and that's something you did poorly so next time you're in a trending model uh, you would stop trying to catch the bottom or top you would just be more of a continuation tr trader so you'll find ways to do less of or you'll find a solution completely but you need to become aware first so what type of trader would you be this upcoming quarter okay and make self-reflection a habit for the full trading session you can only know that you're progressing on a quarterly basis if you journal every day from day one to 90 and then you have all that data points you scrunch up all those numbers and then you can see what to do what you did exceptionally well what you did exceptionally poorly by and then now you have a macro view of you know becoming a better trader instead of every day so build the habit of self-reflection once you build the habit of self-reflection over the span of a year you will start to see the patterns within your trading system or trading self so you'll be able to connect the dots with your reference experiences and you'll be able to unlock insights about yourself such as what you're consistently doing well and what you're consistently struggling with and then now you know exactly how to progress your trading or how to set the right goals in trading to just level up consistently in this game become a better version of yourself so that's how you prioritize what to focus on the extra step for lasting results so showing up is only halfway the first step is to always show up 
and make sure that's the hashtag one priority for your trading week. So always w within your trading system, right? It should have a method to see when is your highest probability trade setup gonna gonna be available within the week. It could be Tuesday, it could be Wednesday or Thursday, or whatever what day it is, but make it a priority to show up to build that reference experience. Okay, so that's the first step. And you want to have the time of the day and cut out all distractions to purely focus on trading this session. Okay? And like I said, with the quality action instead of quantity action, make sure to follow the theory in order, step by step, for a textbook A plus setup to manifest. Because that's the only action we want to be showing up for we don't want to be showing up for uh, at something that's going to lead to procrastination or a distraction so that's that's the first step the second step after showing up okay is to build a full reference experience is to self reflect okay this is what comes after showing up and this is how you trade smarter on the next trade. And this is how we experience trading Kaizen. So show up to the markets, but reflect outside the markets for true progression. And just find a way to organize your weeks and create the time, do less, but find a way if you sh if you show up to this session, you can have time to self reflect. You just got to be consistent with it. So trade review, okay? What do you do exactly like, when you finish finish your trade? Well, I found I created this simple framework to make it as simple as possible because when things get too complicated and too complex we tend to not do it so if we keep it simple and easy that we can remain more consistent to it but we have to make sure that easy and that simple thing is the first principles of that of what we're trying to achieve right so it has to be value action so in my goal it would be 18 to 24 percent per quarter and I have to make sure that every action I take in the market is consistent to that. So I'm I'm getting ahead of myself, but let's say you remove yourself from the chaos and you create the time to reflect on the following, right? A. Have I been consistent to my quarterly slash monthly goals? So like I said, the quarterly goals I have is and you should have as well is eighteen to twenty four percent. So the quarterly and monthly goals I have is 18 to 24%. And if you break that down into 30 days, right? So you have you have 90 days, which is a quarter. And then you break that down into months. So 30-day 30, 30 inter intervals. What I need to achieve on a monthly basis would be 6 to 8% at that range. And if I could do that on a monthly basis, that would put me at the 18 to 24 percent range for the for the uh, quarterly return on investment. And if I was to break those months into weeks now, then I would know that I would only need to make 1.5 percent or 2 percent per weekly candle to reach my monthly goals. So the key action then for the weekly candle would be to just find one. A plus trading setup which I can risk 2% or 1% behind and then I know I will be hitting that quarterly and monthly goal so I am very clear I have so much clarity on the action to take and that's the first thing to consider in the trade review is to figure out have I been consistent to that you know, quarterly and monthly goal that's the North Star. Like in your trading, your plan should be like, you know, your Bible. You should look up to it and you should have complete faith in it, right? You should trust it with everything. So, 
you have to stay consistent to that if you want to reach the goals. And B is three things I could do better about this trade. So on the trade itself, just ask yourself, what could I have done better about this trade? And just look at the action you took. Um, have a way to track every like the the emotions you went through that session or the decision you made the thought processes have a way to track all of that and just figure out at the end how could I've done that better okay and then after that that's your upside and then after that you want to figure out your downside from that so what are the three things that are holding you back on that trade so something you could have done in the trade that okay that is not good. I should. I need to stop that immediately. Otherwise, it could lead to further harm for the longevity. So, let's talk about more about downside. You want to watch downside more than the upside. So, your downside is what what is most likely holding your potential as a trader back. And your downside will create the most harm to the longevity of your trading career. So you wanna you wanna focus on this more than the upside. And your downside is gonna it's it's what's gonna keep you distracted and procrastinate from the goals. So it's best to correct and remove errors rather than making things more complicated by addition. Focus on the negative, which is the painful part. But focus on the negatives and identify areas where mistakes and errors occurred. So these are the areas in your trading performance that require most attention and most focus. Because these, this is what's holding your potential back. So here's a little example. So A would be, yes, I traded on a high probability day and I locked in partials that allowed my weekly goal. So this could be like I've taken a trade and then it's up. I've already showed my stop loss to lock in how much I exactly need for the week. So I could already like lock in my weekly goal. And decide if I just want to end it there or continue um, later if there's enough time. B would be things I could do better about this trade. So maybe that could be like entry timing or the order block selection or something to do with trade management. And then C is what are, what are the three things that are holding me back. And you can see here one would be held on to a trade that lacks follow through. So like maybe like you you thought the trade would go but it didn't go and it's been too long right now but you're just holding it but you held on to a trade that lacked follow through. So that's that's one downside that could be holding you back. The second one is impulsively entered into the market without the TCP protocol. So TCP is just a step by step process I have which is called TCP based on trigger confirmation and participation so we wait for a level to be used and then we have an impulsive move away from that that's the trigger then we study that if it's a confirmation yes no if it's yes we look to participate if no then we don't participate but something that could be holding you back is if you don't follow this process and you just impulsively enter on the level that's the downside Okay, and also maybe you are distracted watching videos instead of tape reading prices. So price action, sorry. So maybe like instead of watching price action actively and watching the candles paint, you're distracted and you're watching something else, maybe like a YouTube video. So when we have the downside, our focus is to mitigate the downside. And the most progress will be found here by mitigating the downside. So the first step is always self-awareness of the downside so you know what to work on. Then when you, once you become self-aware of it, 
to mitigate it completely is to fix it. So fix the downside, remove it, or do the opposite of it. So here we have some examples. Let's say you held onto the trade that lacked follow through. Well, now you just do the opposite of it, which is to be proactive in assessing the trade's progression. So instead of like not being decisive, you're just watching it and holding onto it, do the opposite. Be proactive, manage it, assess it, and then build experience around that as well. It's not going to be um, a quick fix, but it's going to be a potential solution, or it could lead you towards the potential sol solution. Two would be ensure to follow TCP protocol for decisions. So this is just to do the opposite as well. Which, like, instead of impulsively doing it, just like you have to ensure that you f follow it. It's just do opposite. And then three is distracted watching videos, then do the opposite again, okay? Be focused and attentive while tape reading. So by doing the opposite of the downside, you can see how this becomes like very nice points that would actually improve our trading much much more than entry timing or much more than OB selection or trade management we get to know exactly what's holding us back and to not use that as a weakness anymore but to turn that into a potential strength and this is just continuous improvement guys so those are now your new goals for the next trade. So remember, every action must be consistent to the to these goals, and just keep them simple and easy to remember. So if you want to continuously improve, these are the goals you have to hit for that next trade. And you know, one is just to be proactive in assessing that trade's progress, which was a downside but now we mitigate the downside with this step two is to ensure tcp protocol for decisions so we're no longer impulsive and then three would be focus intensive while tape reading so we're no longer distracted so all of this would be part of the flawless trading series which is going to help you with trade management trade entry trade monitoring basically all the actions you take how to perform that action flawlessly because it's in your control you want to be able to do it flawlessly so when you focus on avoiding errors your trader self experiences more significant upside than because you're focusing on your weaknesses again and you're making them strengths now your iteration you're evolving as a business and this is the best way to ensure business longevity and survival and Kaizen. So if you can't evolve over time, then you can't ensure the business will have longevity. So once you've identified the goals, what you want to have is monk-like discipline towards these goals. So that just means crazy amount of discipline and not taking anything inconsistent from those goals you're always consistent to the goals and this is how we ensure trading kaizen so by not focusing on these goals you're just distracted and procrastinating it doesn't lead to any progress you already identified the exact steps you need to take in order for progress so if you're not aligned to that then it's the opposite you're going to achieve so distractions they lead to errors in goals and procrastination they lead to errors in ambiguity so let's say that you're procrastinated you're in front of the chart when you're not supposed to be and then you see something in a chart where it looks like a clean setup you know the step one step two step three setups right it looks very clean but it didn't go as well as textbook well that's because you saw something that didn't exist and what put you there in the first place was procrastination. So procrastination could lead to an error like that. So remember, keep your goals simple and easy to remember. And just stay consistent to them. 
always, I have an exercise for this, but always keep them at the forefront of your mind. And bring insights to the next trade. So the next trade is simply the the goals you're going to bring from the previous session, you're going to bring them to the next trade. Okay, so those insights you got on how to improve, bring it to the next session. Remember it. And this will hold you accountable for reinforcing the things that went well. Like maybe you followed your system. Well, what you want to do is you want to reinforce that model. You want to, you want to make it a habit. So if you have it in front of you, you could become aware of it and it will hold you accountable. And if you could stay consistent in that over time, over a sequence, you're going to be building momentum. And the same thing vice versa. You want to identify the things that are holding you back from the previous session, bring it to the next session, and let it hold you accountable for removing the things that went bad. Went bad. Okay, try and prove this. And if you're able to keep building momentum, this is when true progress happens. So holistic trading Kaizen. So this is when you can view the entire process, not just on a micro level, but on a macro level, okay? So self-reflect both on the micro level and micro level, macro level. Micro level would be each trade, each session, each day, okay? These, this is short-term data, but it's meaningful, as we'll discuss later. And this is the macro level, which is each week, month, quarter, year, so a long time instead of the micro. So we want to start data collecting on the micro so that we have progress for the macro. Like the macro numbers are not going to appear out of nowhere. You have to start breaking like layer by layer to build that data. And you want to make sure that that data is the highest quality as possible so you could have proper feedback to study and then that's how you know that you're progressing towards your goals um, with extreme productivity and not procrastinating. And some days you might get an outcome that's going to completely shock you. That might be too observed or just shocking in general. But just know that the micro numbers, they don't really mean anything. The only thing that really matters is the macro. So, you could have a bad day, you could have a really good day, but if you average that out over a period of numbers, let's say 100 data points, then it would average out and it would be less shocking or observed. So that's just something to be aware of. Know yourself and you will win all battles. A nice quote from Sun Tzu. And action steps for this video is if you want to follow this process of becoming a better trader and you want to commit, then start by downloading the Kaizen worksheet. Okay. Um, the only way to really change is to change certain behaviors and action and actions. And that's how you can actually achieve a goal that you might not have achieved prior. So you could start by just becoming aware of everything you do in an hour, in a day, in a session and trade, and how you could avoid doing the bad things, remove them, and as a result of that, see significant upside. So start today by printing the paper worksheet and then start developing the habit of trading Kaizen and commit to it at least for 90 days to compile enough data on the micro 
so that on the macro you can have holistic trading kaizen not only just operating within a trading day or week but also how to operate within a trading month and quarter.